Well, hello and welcome back to the Mariner. Now, in this episode, we are getting very close to departing, and I am getting down to the last couple of jobs that I want to do before we go. Here on the workbench slash galley prep surface, um, we've got a few things here. This is the little float switch out of the grey water tank. I did a few tests on this and discovered that the reason we were having an issue with the tank previously is that this was not working properly and it was allowing the tank to flood. So that has been taken out of commission. I think we're gonna pull that apart a little bit later on and um, have a see what's inside, see what went wrong. But I have managed to get through Amazon actually, just another little float switch. Some of these things are so much cheaper to just go and get them on Amazon. So we'll get that guy in. It's a small job, but an important one. We want the gray water tank to be something that we don't have to think about very much. Now the, now, the other thing that's been going on here is the fridge. So we got the fridge working. I can actually have things in my fridge. Got my rack uh, sort of sorted out. It's, it looks good from afar, but it's far from good. Um, but there's things in there. Everything's nice and cool. It's working nicely, but it basically is on or off at the moment. So what I've done is I used to do quite a lot of um, four wheel drive, uh, like adventures and, and uh, green laning and then longer expeditions in Australia. And these kind of 24 volt fridges, they're, they're 12 and 24 volts. So they're often used in, in cars. So it's, rustling sound in the background is me opening up this little guy here. This is a little unit. I'll put the, um, the, the link to it in Amazon in the description. I've had these, maybe I can open that a bit further. Can we do it single-handed? Should be able to. Single-handed sailor and all that. This little, this little circuit board here can act as a stand-in thermostat. The fridge is basically on or off at the moment. So with this little guy, which was just $7, um, I'm, and it's got a little thermal probe here, basically this will replace everything that's inside the fridge right now, which does the uh, temperature sensing. To buy a new thermostat for that fridge is 55 pounds. So what's that, like $70, something like that, to get a new thermostat in there. Uh, it's the only part that's not working. This thing would be like digital and, and way better. So we're going to put that in as well. What else we got going on? I've got the um, old sealed light. This is the one that's on the deck at the front of the boat that shines up on the rig to kind of make the rig look nice at night. It's not very important, but I managed to get it out of its housing, get everything disconnected that was holding it in, and very soon we'll put an LED light in there. What else we got going on? We've got here the bow lights. The bow lights are on this boat are LED. They're made by a company called Lopo Light. And these Lopo lights run at about five or six hundred dollars. Now what always happens with them is that you see in here I started to dig away at the resin which is inside here. The uh, aluminum starts to react with the salt water and then you start to get a little bit of incursion of salt water into here. It finds that positive cable and then it blows out the positive cable, earths it to the, um, to the, uh, to the negative and then that's the end of that. So let's say hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So I need bow lights clearly. So I'm gonna try digging out the resin, which I've never done before. This is, it's about the sort of, how hard is that? like clay, like clay that's just set, something like that. So I should be able to lever it out of there and we can have a see if we can rescue those lopper lights. What's the other thing? Oh yeah, I went through the solo mast climbing gear and found a couple of these carabiners. These are worth having a look at. Um, these kind of aluminum carabiners, you know, I did a lot of climbing and outward bound stuff in the past. They can't stand any kind of damage whatsoever. And so this guy, not that you can necessarily see it in this image, but on this edge here, just there, there's some corrosion and to the point where there's actually a sharp edge on it. And um, clearly if there's any kind of microfracture in there, any kind of uh, issue, and this gets used for a piece of um, life-saving gear, this is incredibly dangerous. So this one is getting thrown away. This guy is looking like he's in pretty awesome condition. And all that his issue is, is that the lock for the gate is stuck and looks like it should be able to ronge it apart, you know? but. This thing's designed to take 2,200 kilos in a, a, a inline pull. Um, if any part of this at all has got corrosion, it's got any kind of issue, got some kind of damage, these are not designed to be in a, in a, a salt water environment. So these two are gonna get thrown away, even though it's the loss of, you know, I'm always trying to save a few dollars here and there, right? But for 10, 15, maybe 20 bucks for one of these, it's just not worth it because if this ends up in an absolute critical position, like holding a figure of eight onto me when I'm coming down the mast and then it gives way because there is some kind of microfacture not seen, um, 
this is not safe. So these guys, although we might try and save 20 bucks on a thermostat for the fridge, uh, we're gonna throw away $40 for the safety gear because it's just not worth it. What else we got going on here? Okay, so these are the sail ties I've been making up for the uh, main sail. The main sail needs about a three meter sail tie. That's like a nine foot sail tie to go around it. So I've been using old uh, sheath from rope and I've just been putting a little Flemish eye in the end of it. We're gonna have a look at this next. And um, I put these ones through the washing machine here in the marina. They're beautifully soft. Um, they look, I think, pretty pretty neat. They certainly look a lot, lot better than the uh, Crapo sail ties which are on there. So we've got that going on just here now. We're gonna have a look at that. Okay, I've got some footage I'm gonna splice in here now. I have a look at this as the other night. I was um, uh, able to get everything sorted out from the bow of the boat and get it nicely packed away into the front. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, have a look at some of this footage. This is me uh, folding all these sails up the other night. And the reason I didn't really get into telling this story in more detail is that I still learning how the camera worked and I had ended up with it zoomed in. So you only see quite a tight area of what's going on in front of me. But um, this in total took about six hours to do to get all these sails into these bags on my own and get them inside the boat. But uh, it was actually very enjoyable and a really, really worthwhile conclusion. But I'm gonna get back in here and then we'll do that sail tight job. I still got a bit of a job going on here on the deck. I discovered that a number of the spinnakers which were sitting in bags inside the boat, or rather code sails, like rolled up laminate sails, actually were quite damp. So I'm not sure if we put them away damp at some point or quite what was going on, I can't remember. But this is the code zero here. I kind of opened up like a flower on the floor. Um, it was pretty wet in its bag. so. I've been kind of leaving it out because I was hoping that it would go really, really still here one evening, which we're kind of, we've got a windsock here, and we, oh, look, there's a windsock above me. Yeah, still about five knots flying. If it would just, if the wind would stop entirely, we can actually put the sails up and have a quick look and make sure they're 100% dry, but certainly they're a lot better now than they were. Um, I'm gonna do, the name of this video is gonna be uh, Origami Boat. Remember in the last one, I was complaining about the fact that unless basically you're gonna show boobs or something uh, on your thumbnail, then you can't get any clicks in sailing. I discovered that one of the keyword searches that is popular on Google at the moment, what's trending is uh, origami boats. So I thought, no, I'm sorry, I'll put that in the uh, title, but it's gonna be like origami, getting all these lot into their bags and then getting them into the forepeak, but we'll get on with that. I've got wow, welcome to the narration over the uh, training montage. Looks like I'm getting my, I've got my riggers belt on. Um, the belt that I have is uh, mostly used for holding my pants up, but it does uh, allow me to connect to the boat as well. There, I've got my knife and my Gerber. So any kind of work I'm doing on deck, I always have that. This is the J5, a Dacron Dyneema mix sail, which is going to be used probably on the next voyage. So just getting some sail ties onto it here. And I just got all the sail ties which had names on them and collected them from all around the boat and put them around the jibs, leaving the mainsail free to have its own dedicated three meter sail ties later. It was good actually to, oh, here we go now. <laughs> we all know this job. This is where the zips, of course, have become corroded and stuck, but with a bit of work and a little bit of um, WD-40 penetrant, uh, the specific professional penetrant stuff, they all came free in the end. Uh, oh, and then this is the, um, <laughs> this was happening at the same time. Don't get the paint on your fingers, Chris. Uh, I was painting the racks. That's like a hammerite, super heavy uh, rust covering paint, or if you put enough of it on, it covers rust. You see there, just uh, mopping it on with the fattest thing I could find. Here comes a code five by the look of it. All of these things, it's like dealing with big anacondas. And then, oh, I remember where I kept this in. Watch this, look at this, look at this. Sometimes you know what you're doing and sometimes you're just lucky. Holy, look at that. <laughs> what a lucky bastard. Uh, didn't smash the end of it on the dock. They've got hard ends on them. Oh, we sped up now. I must have had coffee. Um, this is a, looks like a Jenica, a Cuban fiber Jenica. It has to have its clue uh, wrapped and connected and secured in place so that uh, it doesn't come loose. Oh yeah, and if anybody knows what that sail manufacturer is, I've got one of their sails. <laughs> it looked pretty old to me. I, I don't recognize that sail loft. So when you're storing away sails up inside a snuffer, they need to be stuffed right up inside. And then the snuffer lines need to be uh, folded, not not fold, but uh, not fold, not um, not coiled rather, but um, folded up nice and neatly. So you know you've got all of the parts of the sail are stuffed up inside the sock. They're not loose inside the bag, and you've got a nice neat um, fold of rope there that you can access, ready to lift the sail up on deck. 
Get that secured. Good man. Excellent. What's next? Oh, here we go. We're back on deck. Uh, I'm putting a bag in. Okay, so now we're going to the next part. We've lifted all the sails, or many of the sails, off the jetty, and we've got them on the deck of the boat. I'm throwing the sail down, sail bag down inside, and then I'm putting the sail down on top of it. Reposition the bag, and then coil the sail. This is the code zero going inside the bag. Uh, it's sitting athwart ships in the boat, and the frames actually help to like really hold it in place. So you see, just coil them in like a, an anaconda. So you, every time you want to move the sail, you have to take it out of its bag. Certainly as a solo sailor or shorthanded, you've got to take it out of its bag, you've got to move it along like this anaconda, and then reposition it where it's going. You cannot be lifting these bags up. Even though we've got a massive foredeck hatch, the bags just start ripping apart in the end. And if you're on your own, you know, you're going to get something snagged, and then you're going to be pulling on it, and you're just going to rip everything in pieces. So it's just a case of doing it bit by bit. There we go. Get the bag in, get the Velcro done. Uh, that's not got much use on this kind of sail because there's no head and then we get the ties on look we're pretty happy about that oh yeah okay now here's a jib jib's got into its bag probably magically probably mary poppins involved in that one and uh, then we're getting the little tie around the end of it so we bricked it up we've we flaked it into the bag and then we bricked it up so it's bricked inside a deck bag and that's a pretty good combo that is something that can be lifted out of the boat it's so smooth sided and it's so light look how easily i throw that around holy moly um but you can just put a rope around that and lift it up. What have we got here? Oh, here we go. This jib looks like it's going for a uh, going for a ride. Get all the ropes so I don't trip over myself. And you see that gray color? That's Cuban fiber. Very, very hard wearing sails. These are old ones from the Open 60. Too big for this boat, but um, very good sails. Very tough sails. Halley up. Is it going on the boat? Come on. Oh, it looks like he's dropping it. He's not going to make it. Oh, he made it. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, great way to blow your back out, all this stuff. So do make sure you've got, you know, some experience of lifting and shifting stuff. People always say you've got to bend your knees when you're working with heavy loads. But the other piece of advice is get used to lifting heavy stuff. So there we go. It's going into one of the other sail bags. All done up. Nice. What are we going to do here next? Oh, there are ties. There are ties on the bag that then secure it in. And never too tight with these, hey? Just, you know, kind of loose. Roll it up. And then we get the sail tie on at the end. Oh, pull it tight, Chris. There you go. It's got it tucked around behind. Tuck it in behind first and then pull it tight and then you can lock it off. And I suspect this is probably getting towards the end of the job. Come on. You've all thumbs, mate. That's it. Oh, it's so pretty. Well, oh, he's even going for the second tuck. That is important if you're ever going to lift on it. You have to have that second tuck. And then where's it going? Aha. Uh -huh. That must be the last one. Everything left on deck is going to be used. Boom. Done. So this is, uh, at the front there, we've got two spinnakers which um, are actually in bags. One of them's damaged and needs to go to Sailmaker, and the other one is a very old kite off this boat that I bought with the boat. Um, I've never seen it up. It's not in a snock or a snuffer, so it's just kind of there, like, maybe it's useful, maybe it's not. So those two at the front, kind of nothing doing there. And then underneath here, one, two, three, four, there's four code sails wrapped up and rolled up under here. And then we've got one, two, three, four jibs these are four jibs actually off my open 60 which we were seeing if they would fit this boat but they're too long on the luff but i got it all wrapped up sorted out tied away these pads which are here like a little play mat for me they're um the ones which go between the fenders and the boat if it's really rough weather and then we've got these bags here inside oh they need to come from there i'm trying to get like what happens with the the dock gear so this is the the um uh, clean the hull, like um, prepping for, for polish and, and wax, that kind of thing. Inside here is all the stuff for the uh, hose, and then inside here is everything to do with the electrical connections. We have loads of different adapters for um, connecting in all sorts of different ways to all sorts of different systems. So um, they're just down here now and about to get filled up with gear because we're about to go. But look, yeah, four peak, that's um, line that could be useful on this boat, but it's basically the old lines of the boat. And then over here, this is the active lines that, uh, you know, jib sheets and staysail sheets and spinnaker sheets and uh, a spare snuffer line for a kite, spare tack line and a spinnaker halyard that's been repaired that needs to go back in. And then over there, lashing line and small stuff and the electrical stuff, so in the anchor warp and then a gap where the mooring lines are gonna go. So well, look at even got here, this little line here going down, attached to the anchor. This is so I can put a tripping ball on the anchor because we don't have a windlass on this boat. So we have to have a way of tripping the anchor and pulling it back up. So everything really ready to go. And then here, this is a little slip system here. You can grab, <laughs> see that guy come down the back? 
That is so you can lean in through the hatch and grab a fender if you need to in case something is happening. It's just tied on there with like a highwayman's hitch, uh, which you'd use to tie up a horse back in the day. But it means you'll be able to open the hatch and pull a fender because the fenders are going to be stored down there, very hard to get out in the event of emergency. So lots of little details have gotten worked out. Again, I've got my uh, job list over there, and that really is what I need to get into now. So the four peaks all done. We've got a lot of little jobs done over on that side. So now really it's a case for me to run through this last 24 hours and get all the jobs done. I'm gonna come back to you with those little sail ties. I wanna get the last couple of these done before we depart the port. Uh, otherwise, it'll just never get done. But if you've enjoyed this, uh, if you think that uh, I put some effort in, then go down below and make a little comment. Tell me anything you saw, anything that was interesting, anything I'm doing wrong. Put a little like if you think it deserves it. If you don't think it deserves it, just depress the dislike button twice, and then I'll really know that you've got a problem with it. Um, and subscribe if you want to see more of this. If you press that icon, which means uh, the ring the bell, is that what people say? The little notifications one, then that means that you'll get this stuff when it comes out. Uh, we've only got a couple more of the videos now that I'm going to be releasing and I'm going to be on my way to Iceland. So you'll see two, three more of these on a schedule coming out while I'm at sea. And then I'm going to have the footage of me sailing this boat, uh, all 85 foot of it up to Iceland on my own. That should be pretty interesting. So you'll want that little bell rung so you see that when it comes out. But for now, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope that you are safe, that you are sound. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next one. Cheers.